Welcome to The Shooting Show, brought to you this week from Las Vegas. It's SHOT Show 2014, and we bring you an extended news special direct from the site. But it's not all about what's hot and what's not shot. We're well fouling with Gary Green and David Virtue. They're chasing ducks, geese and snipe. Gary Green is out at the geese again on his second day in the Orkneys. Today the boys have put the coffins away and headed straight to a field on a regular flight line to hopefully intercept the incoming geese and tempt them in with the decoys. We'd done a recce yesterday for where we were going to possibly go for an early morning flight on some geese. I was up I think first, about six, had a nice early shower and uh, off we toddled I think about seven, a group of us down there. Uh, nice and cold, good and crunchy underfoot, plenty of ice there. Getting the decoys out was interesting. Got in position quite early. Magnus got us in a good spot where he knew the wind was correct for them to fly. And uh, yeah, and we're just trying to call in. Uh, Magnus is doing well on that, he's turned a nice few really close. The lads are really putting themselves out to, in these conditions to, to find us a bit of uh, you know, flight in. It's, it's not easy. There was a lot of geese probably on the field, stayed on the field overnight on the grass again. When they get on that grass the way they do them birds, they don't want to move. And I don't say as I blame them to be honest with But a lot of uh, geese flying in off the sea, which was interesting. Didn't really want to come into where we were because there was such a big draw up the hill on the grass, so it was mainly going in there. Unfortunately, the rough weather appears to have taken its effect on the bird's usual flight pattern. A shot just inside the limit of Gary's range is the only one offered so far. The first opportunity comes to nothing, and it's back to the watching and waiting. And as the day gets lighter, their cover is only becoming less effective, so Gary and Magnus thicken it up with some reeds, forming a much more effective makeshift hide. Lovely morning, one of the best ones we've had. We had a bit of snow flurry, that was pretty crisp. The visibility was good though, you could, you could see it was in a good spot in the drain down there. But raw, very raw, not for everyone I should think, but uh, I knew we weren't going to be forever down there. It's nice to think coming back to a nice warm dry place and good breakfast. It's interesting the way the weather changes so quick here at the minute, we're up and down the country. I know we're all having storms and gales and that, but here it just can be like really comfortable one minute and then just completely almost like arctic conditions the next. I did quite a bit of exercise, I was a bit crouched in there against that fence, got a bit damp, a bit tight, so just had a bit of a workout, different things, silly things I do just to keep you know, warm and it, that stayed with me, then I was okay, I didn't get cold again really, apart from the, the soggy feet, but you know, you're going to get that, that's how it is out there. Yeah, on the, front. the first one was reasonable, that was, I don't know, about 40 yards, like a pigeon shot almost, that, that was okay. Down as well, well done. Nice one. That's a bit of range. Yeah, I'm <laughs> them to yeah that's it. Well done. The other one's just back here. That's the first goose of the morning in the bag, thanks to some smart work from Gary, not to mention from the dog. The dog worked exceptionally well, felt a bit, bit guilty about putting him out for a few. Poor fellow, he's uh, shaking, could hear his teeth chattering at one point there. 
But no, you've done a good job, old buddy. as it was first thing. Mind you, once you can't feel your feet no more, they're not cold, are they? As the day warms up, the geese are starting to show more interest in the deeks. Then, Gary gets a golden opportunity. Can't miss them when they're that close, otherwise you never live it down here. <laughs> it's just coming behind. A shot like that is enough to raise anyone's spirits, and the team are enjoying themselves now. Even the dog looks happy with that one. We settle back to await the next skein of incomers. It's been a stop-start morning, with many geese opting to camp out on the grass fields instead of coming in to attempt in feed. But some persistent calling does draw in another bird. Single behind you. It's Magnus's turn to get some sport as he swings through and puts his goose on the ground. As Gary reflects, geese can be tricky flyers and simply getting one overhead is no guarantee you'll be able to shoot it. I had a real tall one, which was, I think, dropped about 120 yards with the wind, pushed it right over, and it come down from a good height. That actually burst on impact when it hit the ground. That was a, a pleasing shot. That was dead in the air as well. But the lead on them is a very, uh, very strange. You think you've got it right, and you could be miles out. I think I put a bus length on one of them. I more or less doubled the lead I was given, and had a, you know, a dead, a dead bird in the air at sort of 80 yards almost. So it just shows you what you need on some of them. They look slow, but they're really shifty. Oh, hit the ground hard anyway. Boston nice. Yeah. yeah, I think they've accepted me now after that shot. With one final retrieve, the morning's flight is complete. It's time to gather up the bag and collect the decoys, and that's when an expected snag hits. The deeks are frozen into the lock, and one southern soul shows he's made of stern stuff. Gary is clearly going to get wet on this one to fetch them out. But uh, I've got a real uh, double booty at the end when I had to go and break the ice out so we can get the line out from the decoys that had frozen right in, but we weren't going to get the line out and the decoys are far too valuable. The water's not deep, it's not dangerous there, so I just took my time and I was a bit damp in the boots anyway, so just busted some ice out so we could get our stuff back. With the decoys freed, and thankfully not too worse for wear, we can finally pack up and head back to the welcome warmth at base camp. So they're looking good, so all they stop splashing on them. Yeah, yeah good variation of different types of variety of birds down there. A hell of a lot of stuff coming in there. So I think I had three or four goose there and a couple of free duck and uh, there was a couple of snipe shot as well, but not by me, but it was nice to see, see them as well. And then I tailed it home to a really nice breakfast, a bit of warmth, 
some dry underwear and clothes. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, that was really really good down there. Yeah, good company. The lads are good fun, uh, getting on well, and, and you know the sunrise, the extra bit of snow to you know pretty it all up. But the rawness, the real openness of it, you know, just um, totally different to anything I've experienced before. Been in some cold spots, but nothing like this. Mind you, I think that old fox box has been spoiling a bit with the eaters on this time of year. <laughs> Could have done with that out there or a cup of tea. <laughs> yes, sir, sir. I'll let you through here, yeah? Oh, we just been Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> How's your feet? <laughs> a bit barky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, full of water. I could break it out of ice out. Yeah. We're right over the top. <laughs> Gary Green there sharing some hard won success and proving the elements. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, reporting on location at the Shot Show 2014. The show opened with a bang on the 14th of January. Owned and managed by the National Shooting Sports Federation, a trade association for the firearms, ammunition, hunting and shooting sports industry, SHOT saw a record attendance of 67,000, an increase of 5,000 on last year's event. All the great and the good from the gun trade, hunting, outfitting, military, tactical and law enforcement industries showcased their latest products. And the NSSF issued a first-of-its-kind report that confirmed the importance of the shooting sports to the US economy. The $6 billion industry has enjoyed robust sales for several years, fueled in part by newcomers driven to shooting by hunting stars such as Jim and Eva Shockey. The NSSF First Time Gun Buyers report also showed that more young, female and urban-based shooters are taking up the sport. Displays from 1,600 exhibitors filled the convention centre, as well as rooms in the adjoining Venetian. The total exhibition space was 635,000 square feet. That's 13 acres. At the Browning booth, Paul Thompson shows us what the American company has in store for 2014. I'm holding a new Satori High Grade. This is a Grade 6. And we have also a Grade 3 on the wall. And this year, these are limited production high grade guns. They have a side plate uh, that's unique as long as the color case finish on the receiver. The Grade 6 has the 24 karat gold plating on the birds. So these are going to be limited production guns available for 2014. Okay, I'm holding our 100th anniversary semi-auto 22 takedown rifle invented by John M. Browning. This rifle has a lot of 24 karat gold inlay. It's a very limited production rifle that will retail for $19.99 on the U.S. market. It has a high gloss finish on the very high grade American walnut. You take down the, the form and barrel off just by pulling back on the hole and rotating the rifle when you push this lever forward. Swarovski's Florian Kreisel reveals the Swarovski Optic personalized ballistic cam for their rifle scopes with ballistic turret and introduces the new SLC binocular to the American market. New for this year is our SLC 50x56. We have already introduced it, um, the 8 in 10x56 for the European market. Um, this time the 50x56 is new for the shot show. New design. Green, totally green, that's the difference is the EL series, equipped of course with HD optics for extra good optical quality. And what is extraordinary here, beside the 15 time magnification, we also have let's say, an extraordinary good edge sharpness. These together with a high power magnification gives you extraordinary good viewing comfort or long ranges. We have the new ballistic cap, it's called PBC, actually tool on the, our existing PT system, so you need our PT, well known PT system before. And then you can, let's say, order via the internet through your PBC, which is an engraved cap metal green, which goes in increments from 25, 50 yards to the 100 meters, 100, 200, 300, up to 800, 900 yards, depending on your caliber which you use. Uh, this cap can easily be um, switched on 
just replace the rings on the well-known BT system, set the clamp on it, screw it, that's it. Savage Arms' Bill Dermody showcases the latest Axis 2 and lets us know how last year's release of the 17B Mac has been received. The Axis 2 has our adjustable Accu trigger on it. Now it also has an upgraded scope, it's a package gun, and we have our Weaver Caspa 3 9 by 40 scope. So it's a package, the scope is mounted and four sided, it's ready to go. All you gotta do is take it out and fine tune your, your, uh, your, your sighting in and whatnot, but it should be on paper right out of the box. We've got a few variants on that axis too. We've got a youth model, it's a couple of centimeters shorter in the length of pull. And also in that youth model, we have our, our pink Muddy Girl camo, which is very popular. I want to come back to a guy that we introduced at the 2013 SHOT Show. We started shipping mid-year last year. It's called the Savage B-Mag. It's a brand new rimfire action built around the new Winchester 17 Super Magnum. Um, we've had tremendous success with these. We've shipped literally thousands of these all over the world. And we're having a great time shooting those 3,000 feet per second bullets out of there. And we're already starting to hatch plans to expand our line to include different models in this caliber. Merkel's Mike Nischalki explains the growing popularity of the Merkel RX Helix. This is the Merkel RX Helix. This is the Alpinus uh, model. It basically was introduced this year along with another polymer version of the rifle that was introduced, the RX Helix that was introduced about three years ago. This one rifle can be changed from 222, 223, up to 300 wind mag in a matter of about 30 seconds. It's uh, relatively simple to do. Um, taking a forend off, there is a bar, it rotates up and away. Now comes the barrel. Basically, if I wanted to go from 222 to 300 wind mag, it's a matter of I'm going to change the magazine, I'm going to change the bolt, and I'm going to change the barrel. Basically, it's probably going to take me longer to reset my scope than it is to, uh, to do all of those things above. So. Chip Honeycutt of Crossman showcases the Buckmaster 760. Hey guys, this is Chip from Crossman. New for 2014 is a makeover of this Buckmaster 760. It's completely new to the ground up. And we did this, we started with restyling the stock. We moved to the valve. This gun is easy to cock, it has a consistent cocking force through every pump. Pump it from three to ten times to vary your velocity. And the tenth pump is just as easy as that first pump. It comes in the black synthetic. It's also available in new granite pink. It's a beautiful color, so it's a pink and black swirl. And it's got a, a steel barrel. So check it out, learn more at Crosby.com. Finally, Ely's Thomas Atienza explains the success of Ely Bismuth. We've been selling Bismuth in the US for quite a long time. Um, if you remember, we had the patent um, since the beginning and it's been a very successful product. Now, we've seen the trend in, in this country to grow and uh, last year we saw more cartridges, well, more Bismuth cartridges than ever. It's all to do really with uh, the uh, shooter that uh, doesn't really want to risk the, uh, the effects of steel and they don't want to pay the extortionate price of uh, tungsten based products. Uh, so they rely on the, um, the shooting to the Bismuth product. It's also to do with uh, a lot of uh, shooters holding English guns which, uh, for which the product is uh, ideally suited. That was the Shooting Show News. I've joined you at the end of a couple of days of shooting. You've had the, the same group of guns out. Uh -huh. um, but this is uh, a yearly trip for them and it's quite special in a way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. they're just they're here for some mixed shooting. Each morning it's geese, but uh, the rest of the day is just a mixed variety wild game. And uh, they usually end up with anything between 12 to 15, 16 species a game. can't do that everywhere in the country. I don't know, I, I, I think it's probably just the way the, the farms and the estates are running the borders. There's a diversified area of uh, 
crops and, and terrain and you've got you know you've got grouse moors very close you've got ponds you've got you know every mo you know you, everything you can hope for really and there's a lot of wild rough areas still that you can shoot snipe and uh, you know little pools and splashes you'll shoot uh, teal and mallard and, and widgeon and things like that so yeah and uh, a lot of these guys that's what they like they like the, the variety I mean, a lot of them are again they're coming from places down south that shoot a lot of pheasants, maybe driven pheasants and things like that, and partridge, but that is the mainstay they're shooting. Here, you can shoot a dozen to 15 species in, in a couple of days, and, 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 and you know, and it's good fun. It's, you know, it's just, it's good. It's not massive volume. No, birds, it's not, no, no, it's, it's not massive volume. No, no, it's not massive. It's nothing about the volume of birds, and, you know, everything they're shooting, they're eating, they take everything home with them and they'll eat it, they put it on the plate, whether it's, it's snipe, a hare or whatever they are, uh, everything's getting used and uh, I think it's probably, as, as when I grew up, that's the kind of shooting I did and I still love that type of shooting. With the decoys established and dawn breaking, the first large skein flies into view. The guns, who have been waiting a good few hours for their chance, ready themselves for action. A couple of birds do go down, but it's fewer than David and the guys who have been waiting all morning to shoot had hoped. This morning when we arrived, there were a lot of geese on that splash already. Yeah, a lot of geese on there, a lot of duck as well, and it wasn't a big splash, but you know, they, they just obviously liked it and wanted to stay there overnight, and that's it spoiled the shooting a wee bit, but we still got a good variety of shooting, and you know. The, they took some of their chances when they came in. And, it was a and, big skein that came in. Though. Yeah, a big skein, and I think we shot three out of it when there should have been probably four or five. But that's the way it goes. Yeah. You know, that's the way it goes. It was good just to see it coming in like that. And it was, you know, it came in well enough. It decoyed well enough. Uh, the guys just didn't shoot straight. And uh, what have you got in store just now after we've had breakfast? We're going to do another little snipe bog, and there'll be, there's a pond in there. There'll be teal, mallard, maybe some widgeon. Uh, I have had a pintail and that in there in the past uh, and we'll shoot that and then they're having a wee walk up at grouse later on hopefully shoot a few grouse uh, and maybe get a hare or two, they might get a white hare so they're, they're on 12 right now so it could be 15, 12 species, I would have thought if they're not on 15 species by the end of the day it'll be very funny, yeah, yeah with the decoys and hides packed away, David leads his guns on some walked up shooting, trying to boost their species count for the weekend. The day ends with a couple more birds down and judging by the overall bag, it's been a successful and various weekend all round. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show. Only in Vegas.